God's grace, his mercy, and his peace to you, dear brothers and sisters. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, amen. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now, during the first century, what many would call the ancient world, there was hardly any greater threat to society than the disease of leprosy. Leprosy was rampant. It literally dominated the attention of everyone, and people lived in daily fear of an outbreak, fearful that they themselves would catch this dreaded disease. Leprosy was such a preoccupation that the scribes and the Pharisees actually identified no fewer than 72 different varieties of the leprosy. As bad as something like leprosy can make you feel, its physical effects on the skin, its deep wounds, the loss of feeling in all parts of the body, these deep effects on the outside were nothing compared to the social implications of one incurring the disease of leprosy. In fact, Leviticus 13 said so clearly, the person with leprosy who had that disease must wear torn clothes, let the hair of their head hang loose, and shall cover his upper lip and cry out, unclean, unclean. He shall remain unclean as long as he has the disease. He is unclean. He shall live alone. His dwelling shall be outside the camp. Leviticus 13. Now, if you contracted leprosy, you'd lose your job, you'd be taken away from your family, and you'd be finally quarantined with all of the other lepers. So you can certainly understand that in tonight's reading of the gospel, the ten lepers cry out to Jesus, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. But Jesus doesn't heal them right there on the spot. Interestingly, he tells them to go and show themselves to the priests. This, in order for the lepers to get back into society, they had to be certified as clean. And the only one that could certify them as being clean were the priests in the temple. Jesus told them, go show yourselves to the priests. The remarkable thing in the text of the gospel is that they left before they were healed. They were cleansed as they went, the text tells us. But it's easy to gloss over the fact that they were still lepers when they set out to go to the priests. It probably didn't make a lot of sense when Jesus told them to go with their leprosy and show themselves to the priests to be declared clean. But they took Jesus at his word, and they did exactly what Jesus told them to do. All ten lepers believed Jesus, even though they didn't have any logical reason to believe him. Instead, they trusted his word despite all evidence to the contrary. In going back to the priests while they were still lepers, they demonstrated extraordinary faith. Reason, human reason, says a trip like that would have been a massive waste of time. This just goes to show you that faith and human reason are not always compatible. Oftentimes they are, but they are certainly recognizable times when they are not. When the worst thing you could do is trust your human reason. Ultimately, human reason must recognize its own limitations and bow before the throne of a living God, God's throne, the good news of the gospel, the good news of a God who suffers and dies, and the gospel of a man who rose from the dead are at the heart of the Christian faith. But to human reason, that is completely foolishness. It's folly. Reason knows, knows that no God worth his weight in gold would die 
and, and then dead men don't sit up in the coffin. That's why St. Paul says, for since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand a sign and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and folly to the Gentiles. But those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God, the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. 1 Corinthians 1. Leprosy helps us understand the scandal of the cross. Consider it. There was nothing, nothing that people worked harder to avoid in the ancient world than that dreaded disease of leprosy. Who then would ever imagine that Almighty God would willingly become a leper to save a bunch of lepers? Christ was literally a leper to all. His friends wanted nothing to do with him. The religious leaders, always concerned for their precious ritual purity, wouldn't stand for a public crucifixion in the middle of the holy city. Apparently, it was okay to put an innocent man to death so long as you didn't do the dirty work yourself and you made sure that you would get the corpse down by the Sabbath. So they crucified Jesus outside the city gates. But our Lord's crucifixion was not just about death and destruction. As backward as it may seem, God used death to work life and salvation. You remember how vehemently Peter opposed our Lord's talk about going to the cross, yes? He went so far as to rebuke Jesus for even mentioning such a thing as the cross. But what looked like poison actually turned out in God's reason defying wisdom to be the cure for our illness. God has raised Christ from the dead, and it's the proclamation of Christ's resurrection that creates faith gives comfort, gives to us peace, and leads to eternal healing, much as the word of Christ once created faith and brought healing to the lepers as they heard the word of Christ. As remarkable as it was, all ten lepers believed the word of Christ and they went back to the priests. Yet not all of them were Christians. Only one, one of the lepers, when he saw that he was healed, came back and praised God. He fell down at Jesus' feet and worshipped the incarnate God in the person of Christ. Now, notice that Jesus didn't say to him as he knelt before him, what are you doing worshipping me? I'm just a wise teacher. And all that nonsense about me being God was made up by some misguided Christians. No, no, Jesus said, we're not ten cleansed, where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Here our Lord Jesus shows us that Christianity is more than just believing in the truth of his word and obeying his commands. All ten lepers took Jesus Christ at his word and did what he said. But only one of them worshipped the true God. Only one of them was in Christ. Too many people think of Christianity that it's all about trying to be really a good person and maybe believing some stuff about God. Let's not. The devil knows that Jesus is God. Gandhi's life looked a lot more Christ-like than most Christians' lives. But neither the devil nor Gandhi nor the nine who still believed Jesus' word and obeyed his command were believers in Christ. They aren't Christians because they never bothered to give praise to the living God. If Christ is your Savior, it's impossible not to praise him. The faithful couldn't hold praise if they wanted to. The faithful could not withhold that praise. They would be praising because they know the living Christ. Unlike the devil, Gandhi, and the nine, the Samaritan leper gave praise to God by worshiping the God in human flesh, Jesus. 
Only he received our Lord's benediction. Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Being in the presence of Christ is exactly what keeps living faith and keeps faith living and active. Faith cannot survive apart from its author and perfecter. It's true that God is present everywhere, omnipresent. But apart from his saving presence in word and sacrament, his presence is hidden to us. God is always working, but we can't figure out what he's up to, why he does what he does, or doesn't do what he doesn't do. This is why there are so many people who claim that they're atheists out there. Apart from Christ's saving presence in word and sacrament, God actually begins to look like an absentee father or one that we wish were absent. Is God too weak to do anything useful, some think? How can he sit back and do absolutely nothing when police are murdered, babies are aborted, and sin seems to have its rampant way celebrated under a banner of love wins? Maybe God is indifferent. Could God be evil? Or maybe he's not there at all. Why doesn't he intervene and fix this mess? You hear people cry out like that in many respects like that. That's exactly what he has done in Jesus Christ. But it's not a solution that satisfies our human reason. We want everything fixed now in our way. And in this, even the non-Christian lepers put us to shame. Christ hasn't just told you, like he told the lepers, to go out to the temple and not worry about the details because he's got it covered, so just trust him and it'll all work out. He gives to you his very body and blood, along with the promise given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Remembering the Sabbath, coming to church, coming and receiving Christ's saving gifts, giving praise to God is the most essential activity of the Christian faith. Christ cured all ten and died for the sin of the whole world. But not everyone wants to receive what Jesus has to give. If you want the Lord's benediction, you have to be in the place where the Lord gives it. Christ doesn't put his benediction just anywhere. It's just like the psalmist asks, What shall I render to the Lord for all of his benefits to me? Psalm 119. What good work shall I do in response to the Lord's goodness and love? The psalm's surprising answer to us, I will go to communion and pray. That's what it means to lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. The proper response to God for all of his benefits then is coming to receive them even more. The chief good work of the Christian is to come to church and receive Christ's gifts and give him praise. As the psalm declares beautifully, from you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will perform before those who fear him. Psalm 22, 25. Here, here Christ heals you. Here, here Christ feeds you. Here Christ blesses you. What Christ once told the lepers, he says also to you tonight. Rise up and go your way. Rise up, go your way. Your faith has made you well. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace of Almighty God, which surpasses all human comprehension, guard and protect your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.